Pay close attention. The news you're about to see is fulfilling Bible prophecy. Welcome to another edition of YPN News, bringing you the news that relates to Bible prophecy and foretold by Yeshua Hawkins. Homeless cases on the rise in California, President-elect Donald Trump speaking about climate change, NATO issuing a few more warnings, and now Russia is being compared to ISIS. Mm. Well, all these stories and more, but first, hold on to your seats, earthquakes on the rise. You might never thought to call it the earthquake capital of the United States, but Oklahoma seems to have taken on that name in a matter of just a few years. Now, the most recent quake, a 5.0 magnitude, hit Cushing, Oklahoma, on Sunday evening, November 6. Nick Tanner, a resident of Cushing, told CBS News his apartment shook so violently he thought the ceiling was going to collapse on him. Oh, well. Uh, but Mr. Tanner wasn't the only one affected by the earthquake. Many historic buildings in downtown Cushing suffered severe damage. The city manager, Stephen Spears, uh, reported around 40 to 50 buildings sustained, quote, substantial damage. Uh, well, the U.S. Geological Survey reports this is the second major earthquake to hit the area in the last two months. The first was near Pawnee, Oklahoma, and registered a 5.8. Eight, uh, and Jeff, that's the largest uh, in the state's history, in fact. Yeah, 5.8. Well, building owners suspect future earthquakes will cause some buildings to be leveled. Oklahoma has not always been known for its seismic activity, but over the past few years has experienced literally thousands of quakes. Mm. Statistics from the U.S. Geological Survey show the enormous jump. From 2006 to 2014, the number of magnitude 3.0 or greater earthquakes was on average of two or three, just two or three. But in 2015, that number rose to 889, almost 900 earthquakes of a 3.0 or greater in just one year. Wow, unbelievable. So what is causing this huge increase? Well, some geologists have linked the increase in earthquakes to high pressure wastewater injection into the ground. The wastewater is a byproduct of oil and gas drilling, which includes fracking and can trigger deep faults underground. Um, Cushing, Oklahoma is also home for the largest oil tank storage facility in the country. And authorities report that uh, there was no damage to the tanks despite destruction the quake caused elsewhere. Well, moving to the western part of the country, scientists from the United States Geological Survey, or the USGS, in California are warning of a new earthquake danger there, and many officials are taking it very seriously. Nearly 1,200 emergency responders took part in a massive earthquake drill last week. The simulation of a magnitude 7.8 quake uh, had National Guardsmen pulling a man trapped in an elevator shaft to freedom as well as firefighters crawling through the rubble of a once six-story hotel searching for survivors. Others used specially trained dogs for search and rescue exercises. Although this was only a drill, it was meant to help emergency response teams prepare for the real thing, attempting to make them the best prepared, well-trained, and most efficient to do what they do. While these scenarios seem extreme, the USGS says they could easily become reality. Scientists there recently discovered two of the country's most dangerous faults, once thought to be separated by nearly two miles, are actually connected. Mm. Now, using an acoustic device in the shallow waters of the San Pablo Bay near San Francisco, geologists confirm that the Hayward Fault and the Rogers Creek Fault are actually connected, creating a massive 118 mile long fault. Wow, amazing. Catherine Watts heads a research team to, uh, at the USGS, uh, and she says the longer a fault, 
the larger an earthquake it can produce. And if the Hayward and Rogers Creek went together along their entire length, it would be up to a magnitude 7.4. She went on to explain it would be more devastating in terms of loss than Hurricane Katrina. Now looking back through history, the great quake of 1906 leveled entire neighborhoods in San Francisco, causing the deaths of thousands of people. Now Mrs. Watts warns folks in the Bay Area need to be prepared for a strong earthquake. Her team is trying to predict the future by studying when earthquakes occurred in the San Francisco area in the past in order to give that hopefully early warning. Right. Uh, they do this by examining the layers of mud. When an earthquake occurs, the sediment along the fault line, it shifts. Well, this cr uh, shift creates a time stamp in the mud. Watts' team drops long tubes down into the bay floor to collect samples. The cores, as they are called, are then pulled from the water and cut so they can be looked at by scientists. Now, Watts tells CBS News, if you think of it, it's like looking down through time. We can find a date for those flat layers on top, and then the layers that are offset, we can bracket in an age of when the earthquake happened on that fault, so they can get a general, you know, a general idea of when that took place. Uh, the research Watts and her colleagues are doing will hopefully give insight to help understand the two faults and their potential activity. Well, we continue with more earthquakes, this time across the Pacific Ocean on the island of Japan. A powerful 6.9 magnitude earthquake hit just off the coast of Fukushima. Now, if you remember, Jeff, Fukushima had been uh, devastated by a magnitude 9, that's a magnitude 9 quake, and multiple tsunamis back in 2011, which killed over 20,000 people. Well, the quake just off Honshu Island triggered a tsunami warning in Japan's Fukushima and Miyagi prefectures. Now, as, a, as a result, government officials urged thousands of locals to seek higher ground amid warnings. Waves could be up to three meters tall, which is about 10 feet. Now, while a small tsunami did hit the Japanese shores, uh, first reports indicate that the waves were no more or no higher than three feet. Now, at this point, there is no immediate sign of further damage to the nuclear power plant, which experienced a meltdown five years ago in, in what we just talked about. Right. I bet the people are on edge when they hear about an earthquake, knowing the devastation that was caused by that previous quake and tsunami in 2011. Well, as if that wasn't earth-shaking enough, our report continues with an even stronger earthquake, this time in New Zealand. Just after midnight, frightened residents of the South Island were shaken out of their sleep by a huge 7.5 magnitude earthquake. Eyewitnesses all described the terrifying experience as one that seemed to go on for a long time, causing great fear. The epicenter hit North Canterbury near Hamner Springs and was felt across the country. Now it triggered more than 100 aftershocks and sparked a tsunami warning for the entire East Coast. Waves as high as 2.5 meters were recorded. Now that's the highest tsunami waves New Zealand has seen in almost 40 years. Wow. Well, the worst affected areas include uh, Coveden and uh, Kikura with authorities scrambling to assess damage and respond to reports of injuries. Schools across the region were closed and people have been told to stay home from work. The capital city of Wellington was also damaged and high-rise buildings have been evacuated along with rail buses and ferry services. Those things have been temporarily stopped. Many of the areas hit by the quake are without power and roads are blocked by debris. At Katana, it might be some time till we actually uh, uh, you know, learn the full scale of this disaster. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, people there are trying to regain a sense of confidence. Yeah, I bet. Well, an alarming report put out by the Refugee Youth Services has revealed another consequence of displacing refugees from a camp in Calais, France, after it was demolished. The youth organization found that almost one in three children who are removed from the so-called Calais Jungle refugee camp have gone missing. Wow. Yeah. I know all the children just all of a sudden go missing. Well, that settlement in Calais was destroyed by the French government in October. It had been home to around 9,000 refugees 
including 1,700 children who were removed after the camp was destroyed. Mm, that's sad. Well, everyone agreed that this latest United States presidential election was quite different than previous ones, but no one said it quite like longtime journalist Bob Schieffer. Let's take a look at some of his comments he made on the CBS Evening News. I have seen a few, but I've run out of ways to say I've never seen one like this. It is as if the nation is enduring some kind of curse, some kind of curse. What should we expect next, that it will rain frogs? I wouldn't bet against it. We tend to call every election the most important of our lifetime, but this one might well be. To those of you who are voting for the first time, take it from me. This election is not business as usual. This one is different and not in a good way. Most Americans believe we're headed in the wrong direction. The world is a more dangerous place. And yet the government is in such gridlock that it took Congress longer to approve money to find a vaccine for the Zika virus than it took the founders to write our Constitution. The country seems at a turning point, but the divide over where to turn seems wider than ever. Well, how about that? It's like the nation is under some type of curse. Interesting, Interesting. comments. Mm -hmm. Well, one issue worthy of government attention, regardless of the standing administration, is the issue of homelessness. Our correspondent, Larry McGee, has a story on the epidemic issue of homelessness in California, as well as several other headlines. Larry, what do you have for us? As the country begins to head into what is typically the cooler months, 30,000 people are reported to be without adequate shelter in California. In Santa Ana, 10 cities are set up right outside of City Hall, inhabited sadly by many of the city's youth who are struggling with substance abuse issues. The crisis in shelter in the Sunshine State is being attributed to an increase in rents and housing expenses, and in California overall, Nearly 120,000 citizens are believed to be homeless, with 66% of that number reported to be living on the streets. Mark Ridley Thomas, a city manager in Los Angeles, is unconvinced that the state citizens should have to exist under such circumstances, and he is requesting that the governor declare a state of emergency and release funds reserved for national disasters to address the problem. In a show of compassion, Los Angeles voters approved a $1.2 billion proposal to build 10,000 units of affordable housing. Experts say the measure is inadequate, however, but it is a start. The problem, they believe, is that previous efforts have focused primarily on drug abuse and hunger, as opposed to homelessness, with the result that homeless recipients would still be left out on the streets. Residents of the 10 city are said to span everything from former school teachers to tradesmen. The state's governor said he would not be declaring a state of emergency, however, because he believes that issues such as chronic homelessness are best dealt with on a local level. One issue that has been receiving international attention is the topic of climate change, a matter which American President-elect Donald Trump had previously called a hoax. The incoming head has also expressed an intention to cancel or renegotiate America's participation in the recently signed Paris Agreement, calling specifically on one occasion to stop all payments of U.S. tax dollars to U.N. global warming programs. The comments raised recently raised concerns that a move like that would produce a domino effect among the nations, but recently the president-elect is said to be reconsidering his position on the Vatican-led initiative as he may be starting to see the connection between humans and their effect on the environment. In a recent meeting with reporters, Mr. Trump said he is keeping an open mind on the subject, whereas priorly, he had stated outright that he was simply not a believer and had dedicated a significant portion of his campaign platform to energy issues, proposing to roll back regulations on the coal industry. The arms industry is still going full steam ahead. Russia's aircraft carrier, Admiral Kuznetsov, is reported to be preparing for a strike on mercenary targets in Aleppo. The Russian naval group, which is situated off the Syrian coast, is slated to begin attacks in the coming few days on areas outside the city said to be experiencing intense attacks from insurgents. 
Observers say that the Russian efforts will not be limited to just airstrikes, but will also include strikes from cruise missiles. Moscow, however, has not set or released a time frame for the bombings. Muslims in Italy have dropped the bomb that they will begin praying in St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican if authorities continue to eliminate mosques in Rome. Protests have already broken out, the latest due to the closing of yet another mosque, which actually makes the sixth in just a few months. There are believed to be almost two million Muslims in Italy, making it the nation's second largest religion, but there are only eight mosques left, and as makeshift mosques appear to accommodate followers, those two are being closed by authorities. Surprisingly, Islamic officials in Italy say the move by the state was unexpected. Imam Sami Salim says, while the closures will definitely create problems for Muslims in Italy, he does not believe that Muslims should play the card of praying in the Vatican. Among ordinary citizens, there seems to be disagreement with the state. Many of them appear to believe that every Italian should have the right to freedom of religion. Many are sensing that a subtle right to abortion is being established by Pope Francis. The reigning pontiff recently empowered Catholic priests to pardon abortions. The announcement came in a letter which reportedly arrived after the close of the Coptic Jubilee Year of Mercy, conferring the power which had previously been reserved for Catholic confessors. On the record, Catholic archbishops are saying that the act of abortion still remains a sin, but this latest move by Pope Francis, they say, covers everyone. From the women to the nurse to the doctor, the decision is reportedly designed to be all-inclusive and also allows Catholic priests to revoke the excommunication imposed on members for taking part in abortions. For IPN News, I'm Larry McGee. Good time, Jeff. Back to you. Looks like Francis is shaking up the Catholic Church yet once again. Well, NATO Chief Jens Stoltenberg warned U.S. President-elect Donald Trump about his statement to withdraw from the NATO alliance, saying in an article written in The Observer, uh, referring to the U.S., uh, he was, going at it alone is not an option. He also suggested that the U.S. should not take its security and prosperity for granted. European MPs have voted to create armed military forces which are separate from NATO. Now this information is expected to be operational in less than a year. This force will be called the European Defense Union. Uh, threats, cybersecurity, energy insecurity are the EU's justification for forming this defense union. Monies pulled together by EU countries will be more efficient at maintaining multinational forces with an EU headquarters to command and control crisis operations. Now, crucially, members said that these forces will allow the EU to act quickly when NATO is unwilling to do so. Funding will come from EU countries contributing 2% of their country's GDP on defense. Now, this is where a conflict of interest uh, occurs as EU countries are already supposed to contribute 2% of its GDP to NATO. Uh, in fact, a lot of countries are falling short of those contributions, including France, Germany, and Italy. And as a note, Jeff, NATO uh, has always been against what they're forming, uh, calling it an EU army. In fact, Stoltenberg said that NATO nations and EU members simply can't afford two sets of forces and capabilities. Mm. We share 22 members, so to duplicate it would be like competing with ourselves. Yeah. Mm. Well, information that arises in the media has put Russia and ISIL on the same footing in regards to perceived international threats. In a recent vote on a resolution to counter anti-European or EU propaganda by third parties, 304 Parliament members voted for, 179 voted against, and 208 abstained. Uh, at that resolution meeting, several members spoke up about their thoughts regarding propaganda, and their attacks were mostly directed at Russia. Now, statements like, we are at war with Russia, on a collision course with each other, traveling faster than a jet fighter. Uh, Russia has tried to damage the EU. The Kremlin wants to split Europe. It forces misinformation into our countries. 
What the Russians and extremists don't like is freedom, and Russia and ISIS share the same name. They are toxic. These were all some of the comments that were made. Hmm. Well, although there was much harsh words for Russia in comparison to ISIS, many stood up for Russia, stating that it wasn't right to lump a terrorist organization like ISIS with a sovereign state. Uh, Jean-Luc Schaffhauser uh, said, I'm surprised at the totalitarian trend that's taken hold of European institutions. There is no Russian propaganda, just a number of people who remind us of reality, a reality that's not accepted by the European Parliament. And this is ridiculous to put Daesh on the same level in our reports. We're losing our grip on reality and sense of reasoning, he said. The report that was presented at the meeting was created by the Russian Study Center entitled Putin's Useful Idiots, Britain's Left, Right, and Russia. Now, the main thing that was to be understood at the meeting was a warning to anyone who would talk to Russia media or who would even express a pro-Kremlin point of view. Anyone who does will be named and shamed. Mm. And anyone who goes on channels like RT need to be challenged. Also, if they accept fees for media appearances, it's as if they accepted money directly from the Kremlin. They're going to look at it the same way. Mm, so they really don't like, it seems like, the news that's coming forth from Russian media in the European nations. Yeah, they're giving them a hard time about it. Well, the report even calls out Nigel Farage, and he's kind of the cheerleader for Brexit, for expressing a somewhat positive view of Putin in the past. Now, these series of events seem to be a kind of witch hunt for anyone who associates with Russia. Well, members of the EU, among many others, may look at Russia as the enemy. But the truth is, Russia isn't the enemy. Neither is the EU, but a system of confusion that teaches hatred, rape, lust, and fighting while it brings about sickness, disease, famine, homelessness, and war. What system and how many are there? Is there a system that teaches peace? health and prosperity. Where is that place? Who teaches it? And what will be the results of those teachings? Well, Yisrael Hawkins and the House of Yahweh are the ones bringing forth that system of peace called the peaceful solution, the laws written in your holy scriptures. To find out more about the peaceful solution and how you can apply it in your life, contact the House of Yahweh today. And when you do, don't forget to request your free copy of the monthly newsletter and the Prophetic Word magazine. Here's how. To contact the House of Yahweh, you can write them at The House of Yahweh, P.O. Box 2498, Abilene, Texas 79604. You can call them at 1-800-613-9494. Visit them on any of their websites, www.yahweh.com, www.yisraelhawkins.com, or www.yahwehsbranch.com. You can also visit our website at www.ypnnews.com. For any emails, you can email at info at yahweh.com. For any international calls, you can call the number on your screen. And once again, we'd like to remind you about the greatest Bible study tool on the market today, the Israel Says program. You can learn more about that by going to www.israelsays.com. Well, don't go anywhere. Up next, Yisrael Hawkins. From all of us here at YPN News, I'm Katana Alexander. And I'm Jeffrey Heimerman. Thank you for watching.